1963, social psychologist Stanley Milgram released the results of his controversial Milgram experiments. Stanley Milgram was a social psychologist at both Harvard and Yale. His experiment on obedience was designed to see how evil an average person could get. Milgram advertised his study, conducted at Yale, as an experiment on memory. The subjects would arrive and be taken with a hired actor to the lab. The experimenter, donning a lab coat and a serious expression, would explain that one of them will be the learner and the other will be the teacher. He had them draw one of two sheets of paper to, for each person, the actor and the subject, and ask the subject first which role they drew. The subject would reply teacher, since that is what, unknown to the participant, was printed on both the sheets. The experimenter would then guide both men into a small room, where a not real but seemingly real electrocution chair was. He would hook up the learner, which was the actor, to the chair and put on anti-electrocution lubricant. Once the actor, or learner, was hooked up to the machine, both the teacher and the experimenter would leave the room. The experimenter had previously explained that, that the teacher would read off a list of word pairs that the learner was to memorize. The teacher would le read one of the words that was on the list, and then four other possible words that could correspond to the first word. The learner would then indicate whether he wanted to choose word A, B, C, or D. If the learner was incorrect, the teacher would administer a shock. These shocks ranged from 15 to 450 volts, which at the end was marked XXX. Various other descriptions of the voltage were marked in between XXX and mild shocks. The learner, of course, was not actually being shocked, but the teacher didn't know that. To make things more interesting, after their roles were selected, the actor told the experimenter in front of the teacher that he had a mild heart condition. Once alone in the room, the actor set up a tape recorder that was incorporated into the shock machine. The tape recorder played his responses throughout the experiment. It would begin with grunts and slowly progress into screeches of pain, at which point it would play a recording of the actor talking about his heart condition. The further the shocks went around, the more the actor would yell. At 315 volts, the actor's responses ceased entirely. So, how far do you think the 40 participants went? Well, you might be surprised, or should I say shocked, by the results. 26 of them, or 65%, continued to the very end, even though all of them at some point tried to rebel against the experimenter but the experimenter would counter with, first, please continue. Second, the experiment requires that you continue. Third, it is absolutely essential that you continue. And finally, if they rebelled a fourth time, you have no other choice, you must go on. Only one of these 40 completely normal people stopped before the 300 volt level. And not a single one of them went to check on the man, not even after he stopped responding. Milgram followed up this study with several other similar experiments. He found that the results were almost identical with women. But perhaps more interestingly, Milgram discovered that the farther away the experimenter was, or the closer the learner was to the teacher, the more rebellion there was. Similarly, Milgram discovered that if the teacher had to physically administer the shocks himself, the rate of disobedience jumped way up. After hearing of the results of Milgram's experiments, psychologists Charles Sheridan and Richard King thought that perhaps Milgram's subjects suspected that the victim was faking. They repeated the experiment, but this time it was under slightly different conditions. The victim was a puppy, and it was actually being shocked. Twenty of the twenty-six men and women who participated shocked the puppy till the very end, and of the six that rebelled, were surprisingly all men. So what should we take from this? Well, maybe we should take that we're actually easier controlled than we think we are. We should be more aware of who's controlling us and what we are doing because of it. We should remember that people in authority may not always do the right thing. And understand that even though we may not think of ourselves as evil, that when we are put in certain situations, we may become just as evil as anyone else. But because none of us really want to accept that, there have been quite a few criticisms of Mil Milgram's experiments. Most of the arguments are pretty poor, but some make a reasonable point. 
like the suggestion that the participants knew that it was safe in the lab environment. They were assured by the experimenter that it would do no damage to its heart, and therefore may have given them more reason to continue on. But perhaps the biggest controversy that came out of this experiment was not the results, but the ethics involved. Milgram's experiment caused the ethics of psychology to be changed. You can no longer perform an experiment such as his. The closest thing done in recent years is probably Zimbaro's experiment, which covers a similar topic. But keep in mind that things like Milgram's experiment can happen in real life. Be aware of what you're doing, even if you're ordered by a professional.